Hola, uh, mi nombre es María García. Soy uh, fundadora de la Malinche PDX y organizadora del evento Día de Muertos uh, 2020. Y tengo un invitado aquí, Alejandro. ¿Te gustas presentar? Um, ¿Qué tal, María? ¿Cómo estás? Eh, voy a hacer la presentación en, en español y en inglés. Uh -huh. uh, my name is Alejandro Barrigan. Um, I'm founder of uh, uh, Danzas Mexicanas and also founder of the project of uh, Old Town Network here in Portland. All right. So this is the fourth year that I organize a Day of Dead celebration. Um, for me, it's very uh, deep into my culture and who I am. Uh, I grew up uh, celebrating Day of Dead, right? So it is important for me to continue this tradition here in um, Portland. It's been four years. Um, I work with different institutional, um, cultural institutions, I'm sorry, um, locally in um, being uh, Portland Art Museum, one of uh, our partners, and our new uh, partner, the Armory, that I'm um, thankful for the support and where we are recording this, um, this talk. So today we have um, our first cultural conversation about Day of Dead. What's the meaning of it, uh, the story of it, right? So we, uh, maybe you, Alex, want to talk to us a little bit about what we're going to see now? Oh, yes. The, uh, uh, well, Danzas Mexicanas uh, is a project that I founded, you know, uh, around 2000. Uh, uh, basically, the project uh, focus and the, and the origins and the, um, you know, uh, the origins of what the Mexican culture is today. Um, so I uh, I do a lot of research on the on different topics uh, and uh, uh, the day of the dead is one of them. Uh, what we are going to see is just a part of a of a documentary uh, all about uh, you know day of the dead, uh, which I call you know la tierra donde los muertos están vivos, you know um, the land where the dead are alive. You know, and uh, the title might suggest a little bit, you know, zombie because you know that's the, <laughs> you know, that's the like fashion, but uh, um, but it's very true that uh, you know in or or you know on oral tradition, you know, and the mix between the uh, the old world, the new world, uh, uh, how they you know uh, describe it, you know, have become uh, you know. Um, a wonderful new culture that you know have become Mexico. So what we are going to see right now is just like a, a three um, three testimonies. Uh, the first one is just you know a, a small. Um, this is a village from the Otomi people uh, uh, in central Mexico. Um, I was able to um, uh, be invited to, to an, an Otomi family, one of the uh, very elder elders uh, there, and they, you know, they share their offering, their, uh, you know, and tradition and the Day of the Dead, and uh, um, and then after that, we are going to see a uh, reenactment of uh, of one of the first uh, testimonials uh, and uh, uh, of that I picked up that I found. This is for 1949, so there's no really video or audio, you know, from the uh, for this interview, uh, just a transcript. So we did a reenactment uh, with an actor from um, uh, fr from from New York, uh, you know, Mr. Juan Guzman was uh, very kind, to, you know, to to do the reenactment, and then we did some trimming and video, um, so we can illustrate the this interview. Uh, this uh, testimonial, you know, this is one of the most uh, uh, beautiful. Um, it's one of one of the most um, the beautiful uh, testimonials that I have found that really describe that those pre Hispanics, you know, aspects you know, of the uh, of what the tra uh, tradition is and how they have you know kept uh, very uh, very organic, you know, through the last thousand years. And then, the, and then the last one is again, you know, I'm in the same area. This is a couple. Uh, this, these are uh, important elders in the community from the Otomi, uh, uh, from the Otomi community in Central Mexico. Uh, they, 
they again, you know, they invite me to their house and I make a, a very short time lapse, you know, how they make their uh, their very humble, you know, offering. And they they just uh, make a very small explanation, you know, of, of what else. And then I will explain, you know, uh, after the video, uh, the meaning and the correlation between uh, uh, the religion and the and the Hispanic, you know, aspects. Okay, beautiful. Um, well, we know that this uh, COVID-19 crisis has affected every single aspect of life, but we are very grateful for uh, technology. <laughs> so that's why we are doing this this way today. Um, Alex is going to um, present this 15 minutes video and um, then we're going to be talking uh, some key points after the video. So I really hope you follow us through um, this video and um, uh, be open, be open to the beauty of our culture, right? And let's, let's compare how the past was, was in, in, in the present, how now we're, we're living you know, our life. And, and it's always good to, to look at other communities, how they celebrate, what's the, the story, you know? Um, so f that's why we're doing this, because we want to recognize that our cu culture, our traditions continue to be alive, but we want to learn from other cultures and other groups, you know, as well. So let's enjoy the video now. después del cansancio, el momento más lejano de lo que ya no es, aquel rincón en la melancolía de las memorias de aquellos que fueron cercanos, el último sendero, es el final, o solo un principio.
y mi suegra no, no responde bien aunque sea poco pero es lo que pone o sea, aunque sea algo pero aunque no, no va a decir que es mucho pero es su ofrenda de cada año cada año lo pone no ni lo vamos a decir que es mucho o sea, aunque sea es, es de mi suegra así es que es su costumbre para, para quién es la ofrenda es para los muertitos es lo que es lo esperamos de mi suegro, de puntito, de todo, mis, mis tíos, mis tías, es lo que me Don Ricardo, ¿cuántos años tiene de vivir en Miscuic? Desde que nací. Tengo 79 años. ¿Tiene usted difuntos? Sí. Muchos. ¿Y dónde están? ¿Quién? Los difuntos. O sus cuerpos. ¿Son cosas distintas? Bueno. Los cuerpos están en el campo santo y las ánimas en el allá. Y dígame, ¿qué es el allá? Pues el otro mundo, donde viven las almas. ¿Sabe dónde se encuentra el otro mundo? No. No lo sé. ¿No le platicaron sus padres o los viejitos del pueblo dónde pues estaban? Pues ellos decían... Que el otro mundo era como este, pero sin tantas envidias. Aquí todos saben que cuando se deja el cuerpo, se toma el morral con su pulque y sus centavitos y se despide de sus amigos y de sus parientes. Sale de su casa y recorre el pueblo. Pasea por las chinampas y visita la pulquería. Se asoma para ver cómo quedan sus restos. Y luego agarra rumbo para allá, para el Ayecame. El camino es largo, pero la lechuza le encarga a la cachorra que lleve al difunto por el desierto. Luego se lo entrega al zapilote que le ayuda a pasar un ciclón. La chiva le presta las pezuñas para las espinas y el conejo el olfato para que se pueda reconocer ¿Por dónde está el camino? Cuando regrese en noviembre, muy cansado, encuentra un río de aguas muy fuertes, con siete brasas muy profundas, debajo de una enramada, cuidando una papera. Está el perro negro, pero no es un perro como estos de acá. Es un animal como 
de dos metros, que habla y piensa como nosotros. El perro exige que entregue sus informes y luego, conforme sube, al ánima la papera y la empuja con tal fuerza que pasa el río y las siete brazas hasta un pasaje donde hay un portón. Dicen que ahí está el otro mundo. ¿Quién sabe? ¿Usted ha estado ahí? No. Yo estoy aquí. Pero ha visto las ánimas. Sí. Eso sí. ¿Cómo son? Pues depende. Cuando ellas están allá, son como nosotros, iguales. Pero cuando vienen, no. Son como espuma. Flotan. ¿Cuándo ha visto usted ánimas? Pues, cuando duermo. Sobre todo cuando se acerca el día de ellas y se presentan y piden lo que quieren comer. ¿Tienen dientes? No. ¿Tienen ojos? No. ¿Manos? No. Entonces, ¿cómo vienen? ¿Cómo se alimentan? Las almas no comen. Se llevan los olores, los aromas. Ellas son como... Como nubes. ¿Y hablan? Sí. ¿Qué dicen? Pues todo. ¿Conversan? Son muy platicadoras. Hablan con la cabeza. ¿Cómo se portan las almas? Bien. ¿Son enojonas? Sí, pues... Se disgustan. Cuando no tienen ofrenda. ...o cuando no se los recuerda. ¿Sabe usted de casos de algunas almas disgustadas? ¿Cómo no? El de Felipe. Que Dios lo tenga en paz. Estaba muy enfadado... ...de ofrendar. Se enojaba mucho con nosotros porque recibíamos a los difuntitos. En una fiesta dijo que, para demostrar que todos estábamos locos, se iría al monte y traería cocotillo a sus difuntos. Lo puso en la esquina de su casa y luego salió a la calle a platicarlo. Andaba en la calle cuando vio a todos sus parientes muertos. Encabezados por su madre y su padre, venían llorando y cargando grandes bultos de cotillo. Entonces Felipe se les acercó y les dijo, Madrecita, papacito, ¿de dónde vienen? ¿Por qué lloran? Dejen ese cotillo que pesa y lo lastima. Y las ánimas le contestaron. ¿Cómo no hemos de llorar si tu mal hijo nos has condenado a comer por la vida cotillo del monte? ¿Acaso no fuiste tú el que lo cortó y lo dejó como ofrenda? Entonces Felipe lloró mucho. Se arrepintió y les quitó el cotillo. Y fue corriendo a preparar la ofrenda, pidiendo a gritos perdón. ¿Las ánimas son malas? No. Las ánimas son de buen corazón. A veces nosotros... ...somos los malos. Más bien, este, 
Tata Shiki ka humu. Ye yohto ye yohto ka yohto ka kada bote. Este yohto son de siete de o de español, no, siete. pero de otomis. No, no, por eso yo yohto. Yohto. Es, eso, te, esos siete escalones significan los siete sacramentos del Señor. Eso es, pero cada escalón entonces va, se va viendo, va, cada, cada escalón es una etapa de la vida. Una etapa de la vida hasta llegar los siete escalones. Pero para llegar a, al reino de Dios tiene que ser nueve etapas. Son nueve. Nueve, porque eso me dijo un sacerdote. Nice, beautiful. So it's very, very interesting um, to listen to the stories of the elders. <laughs> I know, it's fascinating. It, it, it is fascinating because, you know, you hear... Um, there's always uh, the versions always change, and uh, sometimes uh, some characters are are included or excluded depending on the region and depending on the uh, uh, depending on the uh, ethnic group. But uh, they're always uh, uh, kept the core of the you know of, of the what the tradition is you know. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about what is the pre-Hispanic tradition because I see. What we understand now as Day of Dead and how we celebrate is a fusion of the two worlds that collide right. together, right? So we have the some pantlies, right? The the skulls, right? The walls, you know, that where the skulls were um, encrusted, right? Mm -hmm. And um, and is what I can think of when I think of Hispanic times. Right. You know how they honor. La, um, dead, but then we have the the graveyards, and we have the crosses, and we have saints, and we have candles, and that's more a European tradition, more Catholic, right? right? That's correct. So, where do how do we understand what Day of Dead is? Well, I think I think the first thing that, that, that we need to um, that we need to think about it is that. Uh, the, at the time when the Spaniards arrived uh, in Mexico, there was no Mexico, okay? And at the same time, there was no Spain. So Hernán Cortés was a guy from Castilla, and he served the queen of, you know, of Castilla. Castilla still was, was in Spain, you know, mm -hmm. uh, you know, at the time. Uh, the next hundred years, it will become Spain, you know? Mexico, when the, uh, when the Europeans arrived, you know, Mexico was uh, 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 many different uh, tribes, many different cultures. Uh, the dominant were the, uh, the Aztecs, the Mexica people, uh, you know, because at that point they have been able to, uh, you know, through war, uh, they, they have been able to, you know, uh, uh, create all these all this commerce and, you know, links of, 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 uh, of family and ties, you know, within the, or the, the different groups, but they dominate them, you know. They, they is. So, uh, so in Europe, you have kingdoms, you know, you have kings and you have kingdoms, and then they will go and conquer other kingdoms, and then these will be uh, tributary kingdoms to them, you know, and so on. So, and uh, what was happening in Mexico at the time, you know, the Aztecs were no different, you know. They have, they have nobility and they have people, you know, the uh, Los Masehuales, you know, which, which was the people of, you know, the town, you know, uh, the, uh, the people that was down. And you have the, the, um, the class where, you know, where the, the warriors and then you have the people, you know, that make the decisions. Um, so... Uh, when the Spaniards, you know, arrive and they bring all this uh, social uh, structure, you know, all this, you know, economical, uh, so socio-economical and political uh, structure to Mexico, uh, here we already have that. We already have the same, the same type of structure used with the different representations. So that just 
came to reinforce everything that, we, that was already here. And uh, we just start to like mixing names and mixing dates and mixing everything, right? So, so that's the first thing that, that we need to understand that, you know, we were not different than they were. And they were not different than we were. You well, know, you're talking here. about uh, I'm the talking social about the, structure. <laughs> yeah, because I'm culturally, about, we were different. Well, no, no, well, yeah. no, the, the social structure, were, you know, everything was very, was very similar. You know, the, uh, that's what I'm saying. So when they when they arrived, they're starting to to pick up on on these you know similarities. I mean, of course, you know, they, they were scared about you know many things that, that we were doing here. That so the, the way the Spaniards saw how. Um, Americans, Native Americans in this case, uh, Aztecs. Um, the Nahuatl people. The, or Nahuatl, or Nahuatl, Mexicas, yeah. right? Um, we're celebrating dead or we're honoring dead. Got them scared, right? Like That was against their own principles and their own Catholic values. Well, uh, what this, happened there? Yeah, because, you know, they, they have... Uh, so. Uh, you know, if you want to talk about religion, then you know, like the way we enter in, in, in another you know rabbit hole, you know, right there, because you know what was religion and what were they using religion, or how how they the belief system was. We're talking about the fusion of yeah, exactly. what existed so it, it, in the religion that. No, absolutely, know. absolutely. So, 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 what happened is that. Uh, um, the main goal of the you know uh, uh, of you know of the new people was to save the souls of the people here, right? So because you know uh, the um, the church at this point is you know as as, as uh, fourteen you know fourteen years old and it's you know, a very well in, uh, uh, structured uh, institution uh, that has a lot of power and. Um, uh, and one of the one of the main things is you know like uh, you have to become you you have to believe in my in, in my God because my God is a true God and is going to save you. Uh, so uh, for the Nahua people and, uh, and because you know that's uh, that's uh, pretty much like uh, that's how we call you know the people uh, in general you know because uh, well, you have uh, you have all the Mexicas were just one. Uh, uh, one institution, you know, uh, you have the Panecas, you have Mayas, you have Zapotecas, you have, you know, you, you have different cultures in Mexico at the time that they not necessarily, you know, um, they all have the same belief system, you know, because they all came from, from, from other cultures, you know, in the area, but everyone hated the Mexicas. No, yeah, okay. and, and, and we're talking about, you know, how Day of Dead came to what it is now, because I guess after la conquista there's the imposition of course of beliefs and mm -hmm. you know yeah. and, and damage to the city that it was already functional and existing but you know what i understand is that after the conquista and of course the imposition of religion right when people have to be baptized when people have to be uh, subject of yes you know the beliefs of the uh, conquistadores, you know, in, in Los Reyes de Castilla and all that. So obviously there was violence. Obviously there was oh, oppression. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was, yeah. you know, that gave place to the fusion, obviously through the years, yeah. you know, to what it is now, a fusion of beliefs, right? So I guess they, um, they didn't um, erase 100% the beliefs of our ancestors and their practices, right? Because we still celebrate somehow, you know, we are honoring that. So my question is, how was the vision of, you know, um, the pre-Hispanic time? What is the pre-Hispanic vision of that? Okay, so uh, so going to, you know, straight straight to the Hispanic thing, we need to talk about the, the, the what was the mythology, you know, for the, uh, for uh, not only for the Mexica people, for, for, but for the Nahua people in general, because um, when the when the Aztecs arrived to you know uh, to Mexico, you know they they were only there for a very short period of time. So by the time by the time the Spaniards arrived, uh, they were the the last the the, the last the civilization that were there. So people often you know confused, for example, you know the pyramids of Teotihuacan, you know um, being uh, being Mexica. But Teotihuacan is a civilization way before, you know, uh, mm -hmm. way before the, uh, the it, it, it's, it's so old that we don't really know anything about them. 
uh, in fact, the name Teotihuacan, uh, you know, city of gods, is a, is a word Nahuatl that the Mexica people, you know, uh, place uh, in, into this uh, into this site. Uh, because you know they they saw all these buildings and said like well, you know well gods must have built this so the city of gods right but we don't even know the real name or or, or the language uh -huh. of the Teotihuacan so uh, I was uh, one of the, one of the one of the first sites that I that I visited in the, in Mexico is La Gruta de Juslahuaca. Uh this has uh, uh, paintings of the first depictions of the jaguar in Quetzalcoatl. Okay, so Quetzalcoatl doesn't come with the Mexica people. Quetzalcoatl is like 3,000 years ago before, you know, uh, the, the, the time. And, uh, and that's the first mythology uh, of the creation of the world, you mm -hmm. know. So Quetzalcoatl, for people that doesn't know, you know, it's like the, uh, it's like, it's the, it's the god of the sun, uh, you know, it's uh, related with, with light and wind, right? And uh, and he has a brother, you know, which is the the duality, uh, which is the night, yeah. you know, and the smoke, and uh, so um, uh, we need. It's important to underline that every single culture, you know, uh, uh, has these elements of duality, you know. Uh, everything always comes in pairs. Everything always is born from nothing. Everything is born from you know um, from all these all these uh, early early beliefs of myths of creation, uh, Sumeria. You know Su Sumeria and and Su Sumerian people believe that you know there was an um, uh, there, there was cows, there was nothing, and then the uh, um, uh, well, it's hard to call him God, you know, because it was called nothing, and you know he created themselves, and then he created the world, and then so on, you know. So going so, back to yeah, to what was the spiritual belief or what was the well, the that, tradition of that, dead? That, 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 that's, that's how how do they what, honor? That's, that's what I'm going because okay. uh, once once we uh, we go back to Mexico, like we were not different, you know, in, in that sense. What I'm trying to say is like the the people from the beginning. Uh, there was no wor worship of of these new gods, but it was worship of of one unit, where there was the earth. So we worship the earth before nothing in the, in the earth is female, okay? So because that's that's our mother, and then and the and the and the mythology, you know, Quetzalcoatl, his brother, you know, uh, they they kill, you know, the uh, the the mother, and they cut it in half, and that's one half the creation. But then the, in the mythology, you know, Quetzalcoatl has to create men, right? And like in any other any other mythology, he descends to the Mitlan. So the Mitlan is uh, as this underworld where uh, the bones of his father, uh, you know, were resting, and he has to um, he becomes himself, you know, a, a creature that we call Tlacuache, uh, it's a possum, you know, uh, and then he sneaks into the underworld. And, uh, and convinced the uh, the god of the underworld uh, to rescue his bones, so he can return. You know, he, he can return the the bones to the earth and create men. You know, from, from you know from the bones. So is this uh, same thing about you know uh, death and resurrection, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, when when we go when we uh, when we go forward. You know more. Uh, you know, the 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 mythology is like a li little longer, so I don't, don't want to spend too much uh, time there. But uh, uh, the calendar, uh, the calendar of, of the Mexico, the Nahua people, uh, is divided in thirteen months. Okay, so there's not uh, uh, thirteen months, and each month is twenty days. So twenty days. Uh, uh, um, they they very uh, they're very mathematical you know they're very in you know into in, into numbers, uh, so you have two you have four you have twenty, and then the uh, two because it's the duality you know four because you have the four directions, um, you know north south you know uh, east west, and then the uh, and and everything you know goes around uh, works around that, uh, in the video uh, when you see. 
uh, the people with the you know with the with the Sumerian you know and the the Kopal, they're always made a cross, mm -hmm. right? So they don't make that cross because you know a Catholic religion. They made that a cross because you know those are the four cardinal points, mm -hmm. and that's you know and and that's a representation representation from from the Hispanic you know aspect of what the uh, what the tradition came from. So uh, the date. When the uh, when the Mexica people they celebrate the the dead like an actual celebration, you know, for that was the month number nine, nine and ten. So each each month that last twenty days started in August eight. Okay, the, uh, within you know uh, uh, well, in actual year now, you know, so they will start on August eight. And they will celebrate for 20 days. And this first 20 days, they will uh, they they will celebrate the people that was young that die, you know, very young age. And then the in uh, August 28, from the next 20 days, you know, extend to September, you know, they will celebrate the dead, the adults, you know, the people that die in wars, and you know, and why not? But they were real celebrations. Uh, their and and their beliefs, you know, they have uh, three uh, three kind of, of of places where they can go. So there's no hell, there's no heaven. There's just like there's there's these places, you know. They 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 uh, um and their and the beliefs are always called Nepantla, which is like in between, uh, which uh, which is Nahuatl. So the first one was the Tlalocan. Uh, the Tlalocan was. Uh, was was a place uh, of that's the closest thing of par the, the, there's for paradise right and the only people that will go there that will go there you know if you were uh, any kind of death related with water you know if you have some kind of sickness uh, uh well, also you know you have like leprosy and and then the, there will be very specific sickness that you that you will die and then the, you will go to that place you know which uh, as uh, a place, you know, with uh, beautiful lakes. There's a place with always this food. There's, you know, abundance and fertility, because this is the place where Tlaloc lives, and Tlaloc is uh, uh, is a divinity that is uh, related with, with fertility and 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 water. Uh, the second place is the uh, is the sun, and uh, uh, I never heard a better explanation. The one that the Raramuris in north, northern mm -hmm. Mexico, the Tarahumaras, they gave me. Uh, this is beautiful. It's very simple, you know. So you're born in the sun. The sun uh, sent their light to the earth. The earth, you know, sits inside, and then you're born. And then you go die, we go back to the earth. And then you go back to, to the light, to the sun. You know, so uh, the cycle again, because everything everything you will see of and any of, of these festivities or tradition, they're always going to be tied to the to the cycles of um, uh, you know, of the year, you know, uh, to the stations you know, from you know uh, spring, summer, uh, fall, winter, right, and. Uh, the the wind you know the the fall and the winter you know is that uh, uh, when we decay and then we die, and then we resurrect again you know in the spring and then we live in the summer. That's why summer you know in August was the that were celebrated you know in that sense. So this is this this is this is the this is a straightforward tradition you know like. They, they there was a big party for the people they were already died, you know, and then and, and we have this this uh, be, be, beautiful, uh, you know. But there was a whole month of celebration just just for just for that two uh, two um, two veintenas, you know, each twenty days. So when the priests arrived here to Mexico, they have uh, because you know now we celebrate in, in November second. So why November second? So it's because the Catholic Church have uh, a first November and November second as uh, they celebrate the day too, you know. 
and from the from the um, church side was because in the in 300, you know, when the Romans, let's go back to the Romans, you know, when the Romans start to persecute, you know, the great persecution, you know, against against the um, uh, the Christians, because you know they they were the new religion and they they uh, Roma Roma was uh, uh, the Romans were war in decadence already, and they needed uh, they needed you know scapegoat, so uh, the new the new kids on the block were the Christians. So they start to persecute these guys and to put them in the in the coliseums. Uh, so all these people that you know die uh, because their beliefs, uh, they were called martyrs, right? Uh, therefore saints. And then the, these uh, these these martyrs, you know, they will have uh, always be remembered the day when they die, right? Because you know they die because. Uh, they they believe in Jesus, and then the, uh, then what happens is like uh, you suddenly you have uh, too many martyrs to remember. Uh, so the church said like, okay, well maybe we need a, a one day, you know, to do it. And originally it was in March, you know, uh, with the um, uh, with the whole Semana Santa, you know, um, uh, with, with the whole you know Easter celebrations, Easter. you know, because it makes sense, right? So, and that was, this is around, you know, year 300. It wasn't until uh, the church were advanced, you know, that started to, uh, you know, with Constantino, uh, when he prohibited, you know, it, because he himself was Christian, and then, you know, the Christian, and then we have, you know, the whole Christian uh, religion, you know, exploring, you know, all over Europe, and, uh, and then, you know, the domination with the next uh, centuries. But what, hap- what, what happened there is that um, uh, there was a point because you know this is a business as well that uh, you can buy you can go to the church and buy and buy you know like a certificate for somebody to become a martyr in your family even though so basically you can you you, you can you can buy you can buy a title saint for somebody in your family and uh, uh, and. So the the list of martyrs and uh, you know and the, to celebrate it was just too much. So they have to become you know uh, to one day. Um, so finally, uh, so fin- finally, what happened is that by the 18, um, 1875, uh, um, the Pope have to clean some uh, area of the catacombs from all the martyrs that are there because they need it, and then translate all these bodies to um, um, a pantheon, uh, the Roman pantheon, where they used to uh, venerate all these uh, all these old you know Roman you know Roman, uh, Roman Greek gods, and then the, and they changed the name uh, to. Um, Santa Maria de los Martires, before it was Santa Maria la Rotonda, um, uh, and this building was donated to become a church like two centuries before, right? So that became the new place in the Martires, and he uh, uh, blessed that church on November 1st. So this is, the, this is the first place where we start to see, you know, a day for, you know, all, you know, el Dia de Todos los Santos, right? Because mm-hmm. that's the day, that's that's the day that we celebrate. But November second didn't exist just yet. So November second comes, you know, a uh, hundred years later. Uh, the German church, uh, the German church, just, those are the ones, uh, the one that make the official the November first, uh, because they take the date, you know, from from that temple, and then the, uh, and it start to become very popular. But we're getting close to the millennium now. So this is thousand years after, you know, uh, Chris was born, right? So everyone is thinking that Chris is going to come back and then the, you ha- we have the last judgment and then every, you had to repent. And, and then suddenly they realize like, wait, so we have a day to celebrate the, the, the martyrs. The, yeah, the martyrs. So what about the rest of the people, Right. And then, and then we said, okay, okay, well, you can have November 2nd. So <laughs> November 2nd become a democratic, you know, date to celebrate everyone else. Well, there was a believer, of course, you know, and, uh, um, 
and to remember, you know, and then we offer, you know, uh, you know, services and, you know, pray. So then the fusion was born there. Well, uh, well, this is the reason why we celebrate on, no, on November 2nd. You know, when the First priest day second. came, yeah, yeah. it's like when the, when the priest day came, it's like, oh, well, you celebrate your dead, you know, in August. You know, we have this celebration right here, you know, on the fall. And uh, it, it, it will make sense just to change the date, you know, uh, push the well, date. Well, it would make sense for them, you know, but <laughs> this well, was well, forced, yeah, I mean, you know. But, but um, either do that or they'll cut your hands or your head. Of you know, course. It's, 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 <laughs> so you, you it's don't have, you're, you're don't ha you don't have too many choices. But, you know, it's what it is, happened what happened, right? And that's part of our history. And, um, and now here we are, you know, and... Um, in celebrating what I call is a celebration of life. Oh, hundred percent. Right? Because yeah. I think it well, is. It, it, that, that's that's exactly you know the, the reason I was telling you about the um, the beliefs of the creation of the other cultures is because that's exactly what they're celebrating. You remember, Earth is female. That's our mother, and and these celebrations, what they see in death, they don't they don't see that they they don't see death. As the, as believing the uh, you know for the religions or the occidental culture, what they see is this transformation, you know, as it's just as just a transition. Yeah, of course. So now, what is? Um, I think there's several aspects of this celebration of the ancient celebration that are being forgotten, and one of them is, and actually the elder. Um, who was interviewing this um, short documentary was mentioning a dog, a black dog, right? So he's talking about this black dog, and it's an animal of o almost two meters, you know, tall. And and I'm thinking he's talking about the Sholos Quinkle. No, oh, yeah, 100%. Right? Yes. And, and uh, by the way, is the image that we chose for this year's event. And um, it's very colorful. And, and the Sholos Quinkle is, is an Aztec dog. A hairless uh, dog, right? Yeah, it's, it's, so that's yeah. our image of this year. A lot of people probably saw the image and are thinking, like, why a dog? You know, what a dog has to do with that? So can you tell us what a dog, in this case, the Sholos Quinkle, that this um, elder was referring to, means in the tradition? Oh, absolutely. Please. So, uh, so going back to you know, uh, to, you know, uh, to, to the part of you know of, of Quetzalcoatl, you know, the the last. The last part that I didn't mention, you know, the last place where people go uh, is the Mitlan, Mitlan. right? Mm -hmm. So we have the Tlalocan, you know, with, you know, certain people, you know, go there. Is, uh, uh, there is, then, well, then we have, you know, the, the ones that go to the, you know, to the light, you know, to, to the sun. Uh, this place was reserved for warriors uh, and women that, you know, die giving birth. Uh, so they they will go to, you know uh, to these places and then after four years they will come back and then and they will reincarnate and uh, uh, the reincarnation they will be in birds so they will become and they become birds so so um, so you, for for people to dance that they don't understand you know about their feathers you know there's uh, there's a lot to understand you know uh, in in that aspect and the third one was the Mitlan. So the Mitlan, as uh, uh, as the uh, mythology the I already mentioned, say, it's not a, it's not a, it's not a hell. It's just a place where your uh, remains rest. Okay, it's a place of tranquility. It's a place of nothing. So again, we are going back to the creation, where nothing was uh, nothing was the beginning of everything. Okay, that's what the Mitlan is. You know, it's, just, it's a place of, of stays, you know, or it's a place of, of tranquility. That's it. So the dog. So going, going back to the, to the tradition. So in the, um, the elder, he say that when the people die, you know, uh, you take direction to the, uh, he say Ayakame, which to me was fascinating the, uh, the he say Ayakame because Ayakame is, uh, is, a, is a word in language Mayo, uh, which means uh, serpent, you know, in that, in that sense when he said Ayakame uh, is plural, which means, you know, a place of serpents. Um, uh, but it's not, it's not a proper word because the, uh, the word in Nahuatl, it's, it's Yakan. You know, which is that the journey. So Yakan is a, uh, is a word in Nahuatl, 
that means uh, uh, cold wind made of knives. Okay, because the first stage, the first stage of 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 the death, is when the or your your the meat of, of your bones you know fell, right? So that's when your uh, your skeleton start to become, and the skeleton is very important because the skeleton is the one, is what remains you know after life. Okay, that's why we have you know. Uh, uh, that's when the image of, of the of the of the skeleton is so prevalent in our culture. And then and then he en uh, entered this journey. So the journey is always as all these levels of the of the underworld in order to get to the Midland. And for that you need a guide. So if you hear the elder, he's talking about all these different animals. You know, all these different animals that uh, uh, they're they're helping you in this journey to you know to get the, uh, to the river. Um, but uh, is the is the dog? The dog is very important for the culture because the dog is the guide, and the, only the dog. Okay, and it's a black dog because A is black, you know, and he is the representation of the the Casti the, uh, the Castipotla. Sorry, I I, I mispronounced that. The the Potica. Uh, anyway, the twin brother of Quetzalcoatl, which is related, you know, uh, with the darkness. You know, he he is the representation in the dog. You know, that's why the dog is the guy. And then the dog will. Uh, so when uh, the not all the people, but you know, the the warriors primarily, um, and uh, you always will have. Someone, uh, th th there's many, there's many tombs that have been discovered uh, where uh, dogs are killed, and then they were buried with you. Mm -hmm. You know, um, uh, so yeah, that wasn't very unfortunate. It's a for companionship, the dogs. right? I, yeah, exactly. Because I because think in other traditions, other cultures do that. Egyptians and oh, hundred percent. You know, yeah, you know, again, you know, this this is not particular. Uh, uh, this is not particular to us, like. Every civilization in any stage of evolution, you know, they came out with the with the same uh, uh, with the same uh, concepts. I guess it's because there's always been respect to death, you know, and it's something that nowadays is hard to understand. Right. And and I think that's why Day of Death has become very popular, and it's because a lot of people are very curious about it, right? They say, how come Mexicans celebrate death, right? But it's interesting to learn about it, you know. For me, I um, I remember growing up, and I think this happens to all of us, you know. You're afraid of getting old. <laughs> you're right. You start thinking your mom is going to die, your dad is going to die, you're going to die, and it's a scary thought, right? But as I start understanding and honoring dead, you know, understanding that it's a, a, a process of life, right? Of course. Um, so that's my own belief, right? And, and it really helped me to embrace that and, and, and accept that I'm growing, you know, that we are aging, right? We like it or not. And one day we're going to die because it's the only secure life that we have in our life. You know, we right. are born with the security that we're going to die one day. So we better embrace it, right? And, and, and for me, it's been always um, interesting to, to learn more about death, you know, and, and it helps me to... Um, to think about the legacy that I want to leave behind me, right? right. Because the, the day is going to come. I believe there's, um, I don't know if there's heaven or, or inferno, you know, I, I don't know. I just know that my soul is going to continue existing, right? So, But I want to be able to, to, to leave a, a legacy behind me. So that's my own personal belief, and that's why I love this celebration, celebration so much. And uh, well, we're running out of time, but uh, talking about uh, the Charlotte Quinkley, I just um, want to let everybody know that we're going to have a conversation about the Charlotte Quinkley, and we're going to connect uh, with experts, uh, breeders of Cholos Quinkles. And that's going to be very interesting to know, you know, more in detail about the Cholo. And um, so anyway, I want to thank you, Alex. And um, I would like to ask you what's your own 
um, perception of that, or how, how you how you feel, how you how you perceive that, you know, in this celebration. Well, I, I think you know, I I like to go back to the uh, with the ancestors, you know. Uh, I I really really like their vision because the the Nahua people always believe the life was one, so there's not there's no multiple lives. And then the, uh, that we are here, like to celebrate, and uh, they even the Mexica people, you know, their government they have the four, they have four branches, you know, they have, they have the same political, the judicial, you know, the military, but also they have a four branch which was called uh, um, floricanto, you know, like the, the the flower and the sing, and this branch of the government. They focus uh, specifically, you know, and teach, uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, the dances, the the, uh, the not only the ritual aspects, you know, but everything that was that, that was around, like uh, like the uh, the cel- the celebration of life, you know, in, in that sense, and then and also, you know, again, you know, it's like the title of the uh, uh, of the documentary, you know, like. The dead never depart, you know, as long as uh, we have memory with them, you know, they're with us. Because uh, for, most, uh, for most indigenous people, uh, uh, despite all this, uh, you know, all these, you know, uh, uh, years and years of, of, you know, of the religion and the posi- imposition, they still don't see that uh, hell. You know, because always was a misconception for the for the priests from the beginning. Because when they they learn about Mitlan, they thought like, oh yeah, yeah, you know, if you but you don't misbehave, you're going to the Mitlan. It's like, uh, um, yeah, that sounds about right. You know, like because beautiful. So one um, uh, last thing is that on November first, which is the last day of our, we're going to start our celebration actually on that October twenty seventh at the Armory with an exhibition of um, altars, local artists. We're going to have some of your beautiful pictures based on this documentary as well. Um, and other local artists that are going to bring their art. It's going to be a very humble, small celebration, but it's going to be beautiful. Um, we have faced so many challenges. We all know that. But yes. I truly believe, and thank you to you know the close group of friends and collaborators in the Armory. That be, they're being very um, friendly and, and welcome this celebration with open arms because they see value in our traditions. They see value in, in you know, who we are as community members organizing and celebrating our culture and our traditions. And no matter what, culture must continue to be celebrated. Life must continue to be celebrated. So on October 27th, uh, starting at 12 p.m., we're going to open the doors under appointment, actually. Uh, check out the Facebook page. And um, then the last day of this uh, celebration will be November 1st. Um, then we are on November 1st as well at the Portland Air Museum. Uh, from 6.30 to 9.30, we're going to have a, a 3D projection mm-hmm. of actually Quetzalcoatl, right? Mm-hmm. With the Sholo yes. and going um, in this journey to the Miklan. So we're going to see the nine different levels um, to go to Miklan. So it's going to be absolutely beautiful from 6.30 to 9.30 p.m. on November 1st. Thank you very much uh, to the Armory. Thank you, Alex, and thank you all the audience for being with us. It was a very unique experience connecting with you this way, but (laughs) but it's, it's what it is. Gracias.